Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this two-part video, you should be able to describe and explain the periodicity and bonding and structure in the periodic table. We'll be looking at giant metallic structures, giant covalent structures, and simple molecular structures. So far on this topic, we've looked at periodicity in electron configuration, atomic radius, and ionization energy. Now we can also see periodicity in the structure and bonding of the elements in the periodic table. Moving across each period, we find metals on the left side and non-metals on the right side. Between the metals and non-metals, we find the metalloids, which are also called the semi-metals. Metalloids have some properties of metals and other properties of non-metals. In these two videos, we're going to look at periodicity and structure and bonding, and we're going to look at period two. On the left of period two, we have the metals lithium and beryllium. I'm showing you here some atoms of the metal lithium. Lithium atoms have three protons in their nucleus. Lithium also has two electrons in its first electron shell and one electron in its outer electron shell. Now in metals, the electrons in the outer shell are delocalized. In other words, they're shared like this. Because the lithium atoms have donated the outer electron, we now describe them as one positive cations. The negative delocalized electrons are strongly attracted to the positive cations by electrostatic attraction. Scientists call this electrostatic attraction metallic bonding. And the overall structure of the metal is referred to as a giant metallic lattice. Now, there are a couple of key features of the giant metallic lattice that you need to learn. Firstly, the cations are fixed in place and cannot move. Secondly, the delocalized electrons are free to move. Now, because the delocalized electrons can move freely, this explains an important property of metals. Metals are good conducts of electricity when they're both solids or liquids. I'm now showing a voltage across the metal. As you can see, the delocalized electrons are attracted towards the positive pole and move towards it. In this case, the delocalized electrons are acting as mobile charge carriers, enabling metals to conduct electricity. Now another property of metals is that most metals have relatively high melting and boiling points, and this is because of the strength of the metallic bond. Remember that the delocalized electrons have a strong electrostatic attraction to the cations. It takes a lot of energy to overcome this attraction, and this means that metals generally have high melting and boiling points. I'm showing you here the structure of beryllium, which is also in period two. Beryllium atoms have two outer electrons, which are delocalized. So in beryllium, the strength of the metallic bond is greater than in lithium. And this means that beryllium has a higher melting and boiling point than lithium. The final property of metals is that they do not dissolve. When we add a metal to water, in many cases the metal simply reacts with the water rather than dissolving. In the next video, we're going to look at giant covalent structures and simple molecular structures.